I think, as you know, our Vision Zero campaign was one of the first in the nation and has now become not only a national model but a global model. 2018, I'm proud to say, was yet again the safest year on record on the streets of New York. We've seen fatalities go down five years in a row, bucking the trends that many other major American cities have seen. But at the mayor's direction, we're always looking for new data-driven ways to bring those numbers even further. And as I always like to say, many of you have heard me say this, those aren't just numbers. Those are families, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our fellow New Yorkers. And the whole premise of Vision Zero is even the loss of one life is one too many. Some of you have covered warm weather weekends in the past and have followed the DOT NYPD Dusk and Darkness campaign, initiatives that we believe have shown positive results. We introduced the Warm Weather Weekends campaign last year after, unfortunately, we saw huge increases in crashes involving motorists and motorcycles. We're focusing, we started focusing for the first time on the correlation between warmer spring weathers and a weekend spike we were seeing in traffic injuries and fatalities. Those of us, many of us here on the Vision Zero Task Force, and I see Keith Kerman from DCAS, another partner we have, we were spurred into action, particularly by the events we saw April 29th, 2017, a terrible day. It was a sunny spring Saturday. The temperature in New York suddenly spiked up to 87 degrees. Even though it was one of the safest years that day, we saw four New Yorkers lose their lives, and more than 200 people were injured in a bunch of serious crashes all around the city, many of which involved speeding. So in response to that, we had DOT's dream team of analysts take a closer look at crash trends. And we saw, as we looked in dusk and darkness for fatalities at time of day and season, we started now looking for correlations with temperatures to see if we could spot anything. And we did spot a correlation. We looked at 10 years of data on the weather and spring days that had highs that were warmer than 60 degrees. On those weekend days, we saw a motorist fatality rate that was 41% higher than other weekends. For the motorcyclist, that fatality rate was an incredible 88% higher than it is on the weekdays, which is a terrible, terrible number. And again, this is a weekend trend, and it's a weekend trend on warm, on warm spring weekdays. We don't see these kind of increases. And I think you all can guess the reasons for it. Warm weekends come, everybody gets outside, they're enthusiastic, they're hopping in their cars, they're hopping on their bikes, maybe for the first time after being a bit rusty. People start speeding, and unfortunately, it results in a lot of crashes. So tomorrow, for the first time this year, we're going to expect some really nice weather, it's supposed to be in the 60s. And of course, we're excited by the arrival of spring, the flowers, the baseball season. But we want to get the message out to families, drivers all over the city. Please, use extra caution this weekend. We've seen tragically through our data that this can be a really deadly time of year. So with that, I would like to turn to, again, our partner and leader on transportation safety at the NYPD, Transportation Chief Thomas Chan. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, good morning, everyone. Since 2014, the New York City Police Department has worked tirelessly alongside our Vision Zero partners from the Department of Transportation to alleviate dangerous driving behavior on New York City roadways. We continue to work together today as we announce the 2019 return of our Warm Weather Weekend Traffic Safety Campaign. Following the long, cold, and often dreary New York winter, it is understandable as the temperature rises, the outdoors become more inviting and brings with an influx of pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorcyclists to our roadways. While we welcome this increase, an unfortunate consequence is often a surge in dangerous behavior behind the wheel. Behaviors such as speeding, fail to yield to our pedestrians, unsafe turning, which pose a serious risk to everyone on our roads and simply will not be tolerated. So, as New Yorkers, we take advantage of the warm weather this coming weekend. Motorists should expect heightened enforcement citywide with an emphasis on these hazardous violations that truly endanger our pedestrian, bicyclists, and also our motorcyclists. Drivers need to be mindful of their actions and, and the harm that caused by not yielding to those vulnerable road users. By remaining attentive, alert, and while making left turns at the intersections, motorists can make a dramatic difference towards reducing traffic-related injuries and fatalities in New York City. Left-turning vehicles at intersections are three times as likely 
to cause injury to our, um, our pedestrians and our bicyclists at those locations. So motorists, please slow down as you approach the left turn. Look both ways for pedestrians and bicyclists and especially for our seniors and children. Always proceed with caution. And one of the, we thank the uh, Department of Transportation Commissioner Trottenberg. Their team has actually uh, produced handout cards um, identifying left turns as being dangerous and advice how the motorists can make a difference by using caution while making a left turn. As the commissioner indicated before, 2018 was one of the safest years for New York City in terms of, of traffic. Ag again, one fatality is one too many. We go back to all the way to 1910 records. And for the record, the Model T Ford came out in 1908. So New York City is working diligently to reduce any fatality on our roadway. If the message, if you were to ask me as the Chief of Transportation, what is my message to New York City drivers? My message is that New York City drivers, if they pay attention on left-hand turns, they will reduce the possibility since the left-hand turn three times as likely to cause an injury or a fatality to our pedestrian and motorcyclists. So again, slow down as you approach the left turn, look both ways, and proceed with caution. With that advice, it's the same advice that I give, gave to my wife and also my son who's a new driver on the road. You can reduce the possibility of being involved in a collision causing injury or fatality. So please, take that advice to heart. Motorcyclists are also um, asked to make sure that they are properly licensed, make sure that their vehicles are registered, inspected, and have the proper equipment. Again, they have, ne have not ridden their motorcycles for a while, and they may be a little rusty. So be careful. And all New Yorkers, just be mindful. NYPD takes a strong stance against driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. And as always, there is going to be a zero tolerance toward that type of behavior. I want all of you to stay safe, enjoy the warm weather, and we thank you for your cooperation. Thank you, Chief Chan. I'd now like to call up Erin Lafarge, Deputy Chief of the Vehicular Crimes Unit at the Manhattan DA's office. She's among the women who's here. With, oh, she, maybe she wasn't ready. I hope she'll <laughs> say a few words. She's one of the women here with her motorcycle. So, Erin, come on over. <laughs> surprise, I guess. Uh, yes, yeah, surprise. Um, we have worked very hard in this city to combat traffic fatalities. We take them extremely seriously in the district attorney's office. And uh, I enjoy the opportunity to work with the DOT, Chief Chan, on helping to bring those fatalities down. We investigate every single case very, very seriously. And uh, we hope that we don't have to investigate any more. Thanks, Aaron. And, and, and thanks to, to DA Vance. Thanks to DA Vance for all his terrific work. Now, Lauren Secular from the American Motorcycle Association, District 34. Everyone looks a little surprised. Yeah, Sandra, sorry. you're next. <laughs> She's Perhaps the, the logistics needed a little more fleshing out. Good morning, everybody. Can nice to see everybody out and enjoying the weather for a change. Um, looks like we've got a couple of us here, and we're ready to ride and be safe out there on the road. So please look out for us. The life you save might be mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Lauren. And now, Sandra, come on up. Hi, I'm a member of the Motorcycle Safety advisory aboard. We're working hard for you motorcyclists. You need to know that we're out there advocating for f no fee for motorcyclists and pricing congestion. <laughs> we want to ask motorcyclists to be mindful to not drink and drive. A lot of our accidents happen then. Uh, our accidents happen mostly in curves and in intersections. So what Chief Sand says about being really careful when you make that turn on the intersection is really uh, statistically one of the most dangerous places you can be. So we are a group of motorcyclists who came together wanting to keep our fellow motorcyclists safety. We don't have a website yet. The place where you can get most of the information about some of the things we're doing is on Facebook. The uh, New York Motorcycle Scooter Task Force. The New York Motorcycle Scooter Safety Task Force. You can find some of that information. We need you all to be involved. If you feel like you've been stopped unjustly, let us know. Maybe we can let them know that folks are feeling a little bit uh, uncomfortable about things that are happening. So we want to advocate for you as members of your community who want to be your voice. Thank you. 
Thanks, thanks, Aaron and Lauren and Sandra for those well-crafted remarks. Uh, <laughs> I just want to take once again to thank, you know, we mentioned the Vision Zero Task Force. A lot of the DOT team is here. I want to single out Julia Kite, Kim Wiley Schwartz, uh, Anne Marie Doherty, Seth Hostetter, Hayson Tanaka. I also want to take a minute again to thank our partners at NYPD, at DCAS, and all the other city agencies. It really takes a team effort, and I think we've seen some real impressive results. And again, we're not going to rest until we continue to bring those fatality numbers down. Uh, I think now we're, we're happy to take questions. <laughs> Shouldn't we do on topic first in a mayoral <laughs> custom? <laughs> Is there any on topic? <laughs> we'll do the on topic first, then we'll, and we'll come back and talk about. Slightly yep. <laughs> Slightly is better than not at all. <laughs> The bikes quite often that are confiscated are also illegal on the roadway. Uh, for an example, an ATV is not permitted to be operated on our New York City uh, roadways. You can operate that on private property and things of that nature. But since uh, um, being the uh, chief of transportation since 2014, we have been uh, working in reference to uh, uh, motorcycles to make sure that education and also the enforcement of it to reduce and uh, the number of fatalities on those areas. Uh, unfortunately, last year we had an increase in, in, in motorcycle-related uh, fatalities. But again, one of the things that we uh, see is that speed is a, a factor and certainly uh, that we encourage the, the motorcyclists out there to operate within the rules of the road, try not to white line and go between vehicles because again, uh, the operators of cars don't expect somebody to come up alongside between vehicles. So again, they are also required to, to follow the rules of the road and, and it will be safer for everyone. We had some decreases over the years, um, but we had a spike last year. Uh, on topic? <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, Chief Chandler, I guess Molly, you know, you mentioned you picked up on the importance of um, on, on the drivers. I mean, is there anything being done for the pedestrians to make sure they walk the sidewalk? And I mean, I, he, Chief can speak about the enforcement. I mean, part of why we like events like this, and we're grateful to have you all here. I mean, we find when we do these events, it does enhance public awareness for everyone who's out there on the streets. I think particularly what we see on these warm weather weekends is motorists and motorcycles seem to be the majority of the fatalities, but events like this give us a chance to reiterate, obviously, particularly we see these spikes this time of year, everyone needs to be safe on the streets. One of the areas that we, uh, when we look at the analysis of, of the pedestrians who are struck are going to be our seniors, that's an area that we continue to concentrate on. While they comprise only of 13% of the population, um, people 60 and over comprise close to 58 percent of the fatality. So that is the target group we continue to work at. Um, you'll also hear uh, our Vision Zero um, van. Uh, they'll put messages out there talking about the left-hand turns, identifying that as problematic, but also that there's a uh, responsibility also on our pedestrians to make sure that they cross at the crosswalks, that they try not to look at their phones and read their texts as they're crossing the streets because, again, um, Safety is a, um, is a responsibility that goes to all our New Yorkers out there. So not only do we expect our motorists to operate safely, our motorcyclists safely, but also our pedestrians to exercise caution and to look for, out for other vehicles as they cross the street as opposed to reading your text. Oh, yep, no, yes. Yeah, no, and, and, and thank you for pointing that out. No, I mean, I think one of the things we're proud of, not only have fatalities gone down in New York, but we have really generally very much bucked a national trend. That said, look, we, we you know, we've had some tragedies this year. I don't want to, I don't want to pretend we're not, you know, very focused on continuing our work. I think a lot of you have followed the things we've done here. I mean, we have been, and I, I thank the mayor for this, aggressive in terms of leadership, of pulling all our sister agencies together, a really robust 
uh, investment of resources to re-engineer streets, to do enforcement and education. As you know, we, we've deployed a, a speed camera program. We just had a big victory up in Albany. We're going to be able to greatly expand that program. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the applause. And, you know, it's funny. We've, we've been talking to our, you know, some of the national safety groups and some of our counterparts down in Washington about what they think is driving the increase in the federal numbers, you know, the national numbers. You know, traffic fatalities have traditionally been, although I think we're happy we've kind of broken the link here in New York, they've often been associated with low gas prices, with high economic opportunity, you know, with high economic activity. Um, you know, there's one theory that's going on now. The, the, the nation's automobile fleet is increasingly shifting into SUVs, which are larger, heavier, it's harder for drivers to see over the front of the vehicle, and because sort of the main part of the vehicle is higher, if it has an impact with a pedestrian or a cyclist, it's more likely to really kind of hit them in a fatal way. So, you know, we're also watching that trend here in New York. We've seen some of our recent fatalities have involved SUVs, but, you know, I think here in New York it's something obviously NYPD and DOT are taking a look at. All right, any more? The message has been forwarded to all the 77 precincts and also uh, under the Chief of Transportation Bureau, our highway units out there will be conducting enforcement and we're looking for dangerous behavior. The area certainly that we've been concentrating on are hazardous violations, which includes speeding, um, failure yield to uh, pedestrian, red light, uh, improper turns, uh, being on a cell phone, distracted driver, things of that nature. So we'll be looking for those particular violations. And again, we, we, we prefer not to issue any summonses, and but we also certainly do not want injuries and fatalities to occur in our city streets. Uh, just historically, for, for your information, in 2013, we had 298 fatalities in New York City. And from there on in, 255, 234, 231, 221, and 202. And we are working uh, in the last five years, five consecutive years of reduction. We don't want any, but again, New York City is doing a good job through education, engineering, and in enforcement. All right, any more, any more on topics, Julian? Well, let's, uh, that's, I think, sort of, l let me take the other questions. Well, I'll get to them. I don't, I'll, well, I'll just answer it. I don't have an, I don't have an update for you right now, but we will have an update soon. So I guess we're ready to do. I think you had a congestion pricing question. I mean, I, I think a lot of you have heard the mayor speak on this topic, and I know there's been negotiations going on all through the night in Albany on what the final legislative language will look like in the budget. So it sounds like we're, we're close to getting a deal potentially. Um, the, as I understand it, you know, from the city's point of view, obviously the city's priorities have been to make sure the city has a real role in implementing congestion pricing. The mayor wanted to be sure that the program was going to be fair, you know, that there would be exemptions, hardship exemptions. Um, you know, so I think we're working with our, you know, our elected officials up in Albany to make sure some of the things the city cares about are incorporated. Uh, and I think, you know, I think we may hear some answer today. Um, uh, on where things stand. I, I think, you know, there was some coverage this morning. You know, there is, I think, a robust discussion of allocation between New York City Transit and, and what might go uh, to the commuter rails, what exemptions might look like, what bridges and tunnels may have discounts. But again, I'm, I'm not up in Albany, so I, I would obviously defer to the leaders up there on what it's finally going to look like. Right. I mean, uh, the plan will be something that the, the city and the MTA will work on together. I mean, the, the, the likely technology would be easy pass technology just because we have it here in New York. We have a high level of usage. You know, but beyond that, I think we're going to have to work together to determine what that infrastructure is going to look like and exactly where it will be placed on, you know, city streets and bridges. There, there's been some discussion, but I think until we see what the legislature finally produces, sort of premature to tell you where it's going to go. I mean, obviously, you've heard 60th Street and, you know, that the FDR will, will be exempt. I think beyond that, details still to follow. Yeah. Um, 
not aware of the specific incidents that you're talking about, the 68 precinct, but uh, again, uh, I believe um, um, Director Oleg uh, testified at City Council along with Chief Pilecki on the, the placard issue that was uh, before City Council uh, the other day. Any other questions? Thank you all very much for being here. Oh, yes. Oh, and you're right. And let me give a special thanks not only to our amazing women cyclists, but to Mr. Matt. He's a man of few words, though. I don't think he says much. But congratulations, Mr. Matt, on the start of a very good season. And thank you for being here. And the Mets have been terrific Vision Zero partners.